Hello everybody and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. Your application should be focused on serving productive traffic. Unfortunately, not all the traffic your application gets has good intentions. Sometimes you need to block or throttle malicious requests to your Rails application. In today's video, I will show you how you can easily protect your application from the bad guys. To protect your application, we will use Rack Attack which, although it sounds almost like a reggaeton hit, okay, enough. In the reality, it's a gem that installs some middleware that allows you when to block, allow, or throttle your, the requests that come into your application based on certain properties. In order to know how Rack Attack works, we first need to understand how middleware in general works. So middleware typically wraps your HTTP applications in a way that lets you do something first with the requests and then with the response. In the case of Rack Attack, a simplified version would look more or less like this, which is we get the requests, we check whether we should allow it based on some rules. If we should, we let it through. And if we shouldn't, then we return access denied. Let's see how you can protect our Rails 7 application so that you can start understanding how Rack Attack works. So let's see how we could protect a typical Rails application. In order to understand how the application works, I have just created a Rails 7 application and then I have, with the scaffolding generator, I have created a post um, model which has a controller, the typical controller default, everything is default here. The post has a title, text, and then a boolean to tell whether the post is published. So very simple here. Um, so how could you start protecting your application with Rack Attack? The typical thing you will do first is go to your gem file, and in your gem file you will add gem Rack Attack. Then, in the console, you run bundle install so that the dependencies get installed. As I have already done this, um, I wouldn't show this in the video, but I, I think it's important for you to know. Um, then, we will start adding the rules that will define how you will protect your application in config initializers and then you typically create an initializer for rack attack. Um, in my case I name it rack attack so it's easier to find. So here we will define these, uh, these rules. But before we do that, did you remember the picture in which I showed you a middleware for rack attack, an ideal middleware in which I said um, you first check if we, you should allow the request and if you should, you let it go through and if not, access denied. So how does actually, I mean, how does this actually look like in the reality? It's not so, um, it's not real 100%, but it will help you to understand the rules that are coming right now. So first of all, you get the request here and then you check if they are safe listed, then if they are block listed and then if throttled. So this tells you that there is going to be three types of rules, which are going to be safe listed, block listed and throttled. And as you can see, safe listed have the highest priority. That means the, that if some request is safe listed, it will go through, no matter if they don't meet anything in the block list or in the throttle, they will go through. So Rack Attack will first look at safe listed rules, then if it doesn't match any safe list, it will check if the request is block listed. If it doesn't match any rules in the block list chapter, it will then go and check if the request should be throttled and if not it will let the request through. Then if you pay attention you will see that there is track it here and track it means that we can also define in rack attack whether the request should be locked. Uh, track it is used for logging and instrumentation so you will also see how can you define which requests should be logged or monitored and how. 
So with that said, let me close this here and let me paste you some examples I have in my clipboard so that you can start seeing the, the rules that we have talked before about. So the first one would be safe listed. Um, so we can either safe list with safe list IP. So for example, if we trust an IP address, um, we will just say, okay, rack attack safe list this IP and all the requests coming from this IP will be automatically safe listed and rack attack will let them through. The next example I have here in my clipboard, which are coming from the post I will uh, publish in my blog, is another way of la safe listing. So instead of safe listing by IP, you can also safe list by some properties of the requests. So you say rack attack to safe list, then it yields this request to, to a block in which you can check for some properties. In this case, um, imagine that you have an API and you can you want to check if the is a legit request by checking this HTTP X API key header to check if it, if it matches a super secret uh, key that of course you wouldn't have as a string you will uh, read this key from somewhere else but so that you can understand the example if the result of the block here is true is truthy sorry then rack attack will consider this request to be safe listed and it will let it through. You can do the same for block listing. So remember that you could safe list by IP address, the same thing for block listing. You can tell rack attack that this, that certain IP addresses are always going to be malicious so that you will put them here and rack attack will always block them. This in the same way as with safe listing, you can also block list based on request properties. So in the case, for example, that the path of the requests starts with sidekick, for example, rack attack will block that. So if the result of this block is truthy, rack attack will block the, the requests. The other option you have is throttle. So remember that safe listing had the highest priority, then block listing, and then comes throttle. What is throttle? So throttle lets you define the number of requests that rack attack is going to let through in a certain period of time based on some discriminator and are, for example, in this case, we are going to limit the number of requests by IP. Um, so rack attack throttle yields a request object to this block here and we can check many things. In this case, the, the IP, right? To understand the, the example. So which this means is that we will allow a maximum of five requests, this is the limit, from this IP address in a period of 60 seconds. So that means that if we do six requests within a period of 60 seconds, rag attack will block the last request we do. After those 60 seconds, rag attack will allow again requests from this IP to come through until it reaches this limit again. And as we will see later, uh, rack attack saves the number of times that an AP address has done a request in Rails cache by default. So um, another example I have here is since sometimes, uh, for example, in, if you have users that share the IP address, you could tell that blocking them by IP address is not a good idea, right? So you could have in your application, you can also add things to, um, to, um, to, your, to the rack attack request. For example, I added here 
Imagine I added, I added a method in which you would get the user ID from the, the AWT token. So you could then later use that in order to filter the users by user ID instead of that shared IP address. So the last thing I wanted to mention is how can you, an, an example of him, how could you track the request you have, for example, if you can uh, log or monitor send metrics for all the requests that um, go to the admin, you could define a track here to track the admin and then tell RackAttack that it should track all the requests which path starts with admin, right? And then the way RackAttack will notify that is, so you will subscribe to track RackAttack here to this event, and then you will define what will happen if this header here matches the admin track that you have defined here. Yeah, for example, you could here um, lock something in the Rails logs, or you could use datadoc, met, send something to your datadocs or whatever tool you are using to send your metrics. Okay, so I think that's enough from the things I have to tell you here. So let's see an example. Uh, how could this work? Uh, for example, if we want to limit by IP. So example, uh, sorry, um, imagine that we want to uh, limit the requests we want to um, do by IP address. Uh, imagine that we want to limit those to five every 30 seconds. So we will typically add this to rack attack. And, um, and then I guess I have here, let me open this um, in a window, sharing the window here. Okay, so that you can see that better. And do you rem if you remember, I said that Throttle um, saved each uh, hit in a cache. So first of all, we need to know if, uh, as I'm going to check that in uh, development mode, you need to ensure that in the temp folder, TMP folder, sorry, there is this caching dev txt file. If it isn't, you can just run Rails uh, dev cache and it will create it for you, or you can just also say touch uh, caching dev text. Sorry, create that file and it will be that will be the same. So let's start this server, which starts in port 3000. And then let me show you some curl requests. As you can see, three, four, sorry, four, five. And then rack attack saves, retry later. So as we have already done five requests, the sixth request gets blocked by rack attack. And we see that it's telling us to retry later. So if we want to see what rack attack, I mean, more information about what rack attack is returning, we can say, we can check the same, but getting the, uh, the headers, right? So. This is the fourth, three, fourth, five, and six. As you can see in the sixth one, you see that rack attack, uh, besides retry later, it's also saying that this request has the HTTP code 429 and it's telling us too many requests. And that's it. As you can see, it's pretty easy to secure your application from malicious traffic using rack attack. And that's basically it. Now you know the basics about how to block and throttle malicious requests to your application. I will leave you the documentation to rack attack in the description down below so that you can further read and know more about it. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any future updates. 
and also do not forget to smash the like button so that it will help me with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you want me to talk about any topic, you can leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And without further ado, hope to see you in my next video. Adios.